Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ted Carr here. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about the five reasons why you probably want to go to Chiang Mai, Thailand, as well as some things to consider before you do go. First reason why you wanna to go to Chiang Mai, Thailand is because of the weather. The weather year round is fantastic. I really, really wish Canada had the weather that Chiang Mai has. Because if Canada had the same weather Chiang Mai has, I wouldn't need to leave. I could just stay right here and I'd be totally happy about where I'm living. So Chiang Mai has got fantastic weather all year round. It does have a rainy season, but even in the rainy season, it's not like it's raining all day long. It just rains every now and then. And it does have a bit of a cold season in December, in January. But even then, it's only really cold in the morning and in the late evenings. For the rest of the day, it's fine, it's sunny, it's great. So all year long, it is great weather. So you might think, well, I'll just go to Chiang Mai right away. Boom, don't need to think about it. But there is something you gotta think about. And that is the pollution. The pollution level is quite bad, both in the city and in the countryside during the smoky season. You wanna, you wanna avoid all of Chiang Mai during February, March, and April. And the reason you remember that is FMA, and that stands for fuck murky air. The air is so bad there that your clothes will start smelling like smoke. You'll start tasting the smoke on your tongue because all the farmers are burning all the rice fields to make room for new rice fields. And this is this this affects all of Chiang Mai and even even north of Chiang Mai like up in places like Pai which are normally not really affected by Chiang Mai at all. So keep that in mind. Just cuz the weather's nice doesn't mean the pollution is awesome. If quality air is your objective, if breathing in the cleanest air possible is your objective, I wouldn't go to Chiang Mai. It's got quite dirty air. And when I first moved there, I was quite in denial of that. I was kind of in the honeymoon phase with, with Chiang Mai. I was like, wow, Chiang Mai is perfect. And I just didn't want to address the, some of the shortcomings. But now that I've backed away from Chiang Mai, and once I really left it, I could see it. And I was there for that, that February period, a bit of March. And I was like, wow, this air is so bad. So, so bad. I need to tell everyone about it. So keep that in mind. The weather's great, but the air quality can be shit. The second reason you probably want to go to Chiang Mai is because of the high quality fruit that comes along with the great weather. You can only really grow great fruit if you've got great weather. And the fruit is fantastic. You're going to get amazing mangoes, amazing papayas, amazing dragon fruit, amazing dragon fruit. Oh my god, almost bringing me to tears right now just thinking back of how good they were. Uh, amazing avocados, amazing bananas, amazing coconuts. All the fruit there is so good and it's so cheap. The fruit is so cheap and such high quality. And again, you might think, well, if all the fruit's good in Chiang Mai, I should just go to Chiang Mai right now and be a fruitarian or be a raw vegan. It must be really easy. Well, two things you gotta keep in mind. First thing you gotta keep in mind is that it's not all organic. You can find organic fruit in Chiang Mai, but it's not readily available and it's not super, super cheap. If you wanna buy organic fruit in in Chiang Mai, Thailand, you're gonna be paying a premium price for it. Uh, but most of the fruit, even though it's not organic, it still tastes really, really good. Um, but if organic is your objective, maybe you wanna go somewhere else like California where there's a lot more organic available. But Chiang Mai's got the low fruit price and it's got the abundance, the sheer and absolute abundance. Everywhere you go, there's pineapples on the side of the road, there's watermelon on the side of the road, there's cut up, uh, guava on the side of the road, although they dip it in some candy sugar sauce or whatever, and the pineapple is dipped in salt water as well. You got to keep that in mind. Um, so there's these little shady things you got to bear in mind when dealing with Thailand, but the fruit is absolutely everywhere and it's so, so cheap. Um, you can live on a fruitarian diet for less than $300 a month there, no problem. So keep that in mind. Um, and the, the second thing you got to keep in mind is, yeah, okay, it's not all organic. There's quite a lot of pesticides on the fruit. The other thing you got to keep in mind, though, is if you want to go to Chiang Mai to be a raw vegan, you first have to master raw veganism where you're living in your house now. It's not going to get any easier in Thailand. It might be more enjoyable because the weather's nicer and the fruit is higher quality, but it won't get any easier to not eat your cooked foods. All right, so you got to overcome the cooked food habit at your house now before you get on a flight and fly to Thailand and expect it to magically disappear on the flight over there. So deal with your cooked food cravings and your cooked food habits at home, clear them up, do a 100% raw for a month or two, and then go to Thailand. Um, and if you're interested in doing a 30 day raw food challenge, you can sign up right now by the link below. Go to the 30 day raw food challenge.com and try it out for a month. The third reason why you probably want to move to Chiang Mai, Thailand is because of the affordability. 
It's cheap there, man. Like I said, the fruit, you can live on a 100% raw vegan diet there for less than 300 bucks a month. You can get an apartment there for less than 300 bucks a month. That brings you to a grand total of $600 a month for your food and rent. What else might you buy there once you're there? You might go for some dinners at restaurants with some friends, or you might pay Uber or a couple song tiles to drive you around, or you might go to a waterfall here and there, you gotta pay for admission there, or you might do some fun stuff, who knows, but for the most part, you can get by in Thailand for around six to $800 a month. If you wanna live like a king in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, Thailand, you could have a budget of $1,000 to $1,200 a month, and you're living lavishly. There's all sorts of places you can rent, and all different levels of, um, Ubers that you can take and different activities that you can do and different priced fruit as well. You can spend way more on fruit and way more on restaurants uh, if you want, if you got the money, or you can do a little more frugally and buy the cheapest of cheap stuff. And if you want to get fruit even cheaper, then buy bulk. I always got discounts when I bought bulk and people would say, Ted, why are you trying to get a discount? These people are already poor, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Bro, when you buy bulk anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where you are, in Canada, in California, or in Thailand, when you buy bulk, you should always get a discount. Always get a discount because when you buy bulk, you're helping the store owner not let a lot of the food go to waste. Because if you go to the fruit market in Chiang Mai or any fruit market really, you'll see that a good 30 to 40% of all of the fruit that they have there is going to waste. Nobody's buying it. It's just wasted product. So when you buy bulk, you're ensuring that that farmer or that salesman at the storefront there, the, the, the market stall, is not wasting product. He's at least making some money from that that he would otherwise have to throw to waste. So buy bulk and just ask for maybe a 5 to 10% discount. There's nothing steep. And if you want, you can tip them as well. Um, so that's always nice. The fourth reason why you want to live in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, Thailand specifically, is because there are tons of other vegans there. there it's a great big network of other vegans there. There are so many vegan cyclists there. There's so many vegan athletes there. There's so many vegan vloggers there. There's so many digital nomads living in Chiang Mai year round. And how they live there year round, I'm not sure what visa they've got. The visa rules are always changing, so that's something you need to look into. When I was in Chiang Mai, the reason I was able to live there for over a year, almost two years, was because I had a volunteer visa and I was volunteering at some organization. Uh, but that organization is no longer available. Because like I said, everything in Thailand is always changing, the laws are always changing, and that organization was no longer to keep up with the laws and they had to shut down. So I'm not sure how you're able to stay there long term. Don't ask me how to get a volunteer visa or any sort of visa for that matter. Just do your research online and ask people who are already there. What you can do for sure though is you can get a 30-day visa on arrival. That'll grant you access to Thailand for 30 days. If you like it within that 30 days, you can definitely have, you have enough time there to ask someone how to get a 90-day visa. And I'm pretty sure the way to get a 90-day visa is to go to the embassy in Thailand, ask for the, the visa application for the 90-day thing, you get that, you fill it out, and then you fly to Laos, to neighboring country, you fly to Laos or Malaysia, whatever you want. I went to both, I went to Laos for a quick and easy, cheap spot to get the 90-day visa. And I also went to Malaysia, because I wanted to try out some durian, some really good durian, the best durian in the world is in Malaysia. I went to Malaysia to get my 90-day visa as well. So both were experiences, Laos was quite, shitty but had an amazing time there because I met a cool person there and Malaysia was great but a lot more expensive because the durian was so dang good. Um, but anyways, there are a lot of vegans in Chiang Mai which is another reason why you want to go. Tons of activities. I had to put a sign on my door outside where I was living that said do not knock YouTube video filming in progress. And Sometimes, a lot of times I wouldn't even lock my door. I'd just go out for a training ride, I'd go out for a run, I'd go out for a swim, and I'd come back and like I'd see some of my fruit was eaten. Like, what the heck? And then I'd see like a note on my bed, it's like some of my friends would come and eat some of my fruit and said, hey, Ted, thanks for the dragon fruits. So like, I, I did put a sign on my door saying don't knock because so many people kept coming over and even when I wasn't home, people would come over and eat my fruit. Like there's just so many people in Chiang Mai, so many friends from all over the world. You're gonna meet a bunch of amazing people there. Um, and I know there was like that, 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 uh, uh, what's it called that that the Thai fruit fest was happening there and Connor and Brittany's fruit winter fest is happening there so a lot of community there I've met some amazing people there and then uh, the best place to meet people in Chiang Mai is Bok Hod Park it's like the bottom left corner of the city good times there. I'm just thinking back all the good times there Bok Hod Park bottom left corner of the city if you go there and you spend 
two to three hours there every single day for a week, you'll meet 30 new friends. It's a great, easy place to meet friends. People are either juggling, slacklining, meditating, doing acro yoga, just playing around, doing handstands, whatever it is. There's just, or just chilling, getting some sun, reading a book, listening to an audiobook, having a massage, drinking a coconut, all sorts of cool things happening at that park. And it's like the one, the one spot in Chiang Mai where it's like full of nature. So uh, keep that spot in mind if you want to go meet, meet some friends. The fifth and last reason why I think you want to go live in Chiang Mai, a really good reason you want to go live in Chiang Mai, is that it's a slow lifestyle. And no one's in a rush. There's something called Thai time, which means if someone says, all right, we'll meet at five, probably means like six or quarter to six or 6.30 even, like it's Thai time. It doesn't really matter. Like no one's in a rush, uh, which can be unhelpful at times if you've got to get to the airport at a certain time. And the taxi driver's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know, like, you had to be there a certain time, sorry, I'm not going to be there for another hour. You're screwed. Or if you tell, like, the lady at the front desk to, uh, to call you a taxi, whatever, you come back, like, 20 minutes later, she's like, oh, sorry, I haven't done it yet. Like, no, sorry, she won't apologize. It's, it's very North American, it's very European to be apologetic. In Thai, they don't really apologize for things. They just think, like, meh, I'll call now. I didn't call the taxi for you yet, I'll do it now. But they won't apologize and say, oh, I'm so sorry, sir, I'll call the taxi now. They're not very apologetic, um, which is it's just their culture. It's not good or bad. In North America, we're very apologetic to a fault almost sometimes. And I remember I spent so long in Thailand and no one ever apologized, no customer service would ever apologize. And then I, I flew home and I had to transfer in China. And when I was transferring in China, I bought a couple bottles of water and one of the bottles of water had some salt in it. So I took it back and said, hey, can I get a refund? And the lady was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And she like ran to the back of the, the, the building and came back and like was hustling. And she's like, so sorry, sir, here, have this new bottle of water. Like, no problem, blah, blah, blah. Like, very apologetic. And I was like, well, such a contrast to Thailand. Like, they would never run for you in Thailand. They're very like calm, slow, easy going pace. And they would never really apologize. But um, really nice, friendly people in Thailand, I gotta say. So yeah, you're gonna meet a lot of vegans there, but you're also gonna meet a lot of nice Thai people there. Some of the nicest people I've ever met were these local Thais. But back to that, that fifth reason why you want to go there. It's slow, easy pace, slow, easy living. No one's in a rush to get much stuff done. It is the number one place to go on the digital nomad list, apparently, for like the, the best spot in the world to go live as a digital nomad if you want to go make a living online, run your online business. But there aren't many people hustling around you. So you've got to create that your own inner hustle. You've got to create your own inner drive. Uh, if you really want to spark that inner hustle, there are a couple places you might want to check out. You might want to check out the, um, the AIS cafeteria workspace in the mall, in Maya Mall. There's a lot of people working there. And whenever I'd go there to work on like my ebook or something, it'd feel like I'm in the gym working out with a bunch of other people who are doing fitness. But instead of doing fitness, we're all in there working like on our projects or people studying, doing homework and stuff. So keep that in mind. If, uh, if you want to work on an online business, just go to a place like the AIS cafeteria in Maya Mall. And another great place to go is just go on Google and type in co-working spaces in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and then pay like a monthly fee to have this little office space for you. Or just team up with some buddies, have some accountability. Ask a couple of friends if they want to make eBooks with you or video courses with you, and then, and then meet up on a regular basis, on a, on a daily or weekly basis at a certain cafe or something, and work on your projects. If you're gonna work at a cafe to get your hustle on, to, uh, to counteract that the really slow life, easy living, then be sure no matter what cafe you're at, you're also buying a smoothie or a juice there to pay for your, to pay for your little seat that you're using to pay for the use of Wi-Fi. There's a lot of people who just go to cafes, they don't buy anything, just use the Wi-Fi and then leave, and I think that's pretty cheap, it's pretty rude, so be sure to uh, support the cafe with a purchase. Anyways guys, I hope those five reasons to go to Chiang Mai, inspire you to either go to Chiang Mai or they give you a realization of why you might not want to go. Um, just to recap the five good reasons why you want to go, the first one is the weather. The weather is fantastic. The second one is the fruit. The fruit is super, super good. The next one is the affordability. It's very, very cheap. So pretty much anyone can afford it. It's like the cheapest place to live on planet Earth if you can get your plane ticket over there, which is kind of expensive. The uh, fourth reason why you want to go is because of all the vegan friends that you're going to meet there and nice local Thai friends. And then the fifth reason why you want to go there is because of the, because of the, what's the fifth reason? Slow life living, slow, easy life living. 
And then the five things you want to consider before you go there, don't just say, oh, it's so perfect. I'm going to go to Chiang Mai. There are five things you want to consider. The air pollution is quite bad during February, March, and April. The, uh, cold, the, you might not be able to get a visa. It might be kind of complicated to get a visa, and there are a lot of scammers out there, kind of fraudulent people out there, so be weary about getting a visa there. Um, the fruit is not always organic, so make sure to seek that out or just bite the bullet and just know that you're consuming some pesticides and herbicides whenever you eat the fruit there. Um, the customer service is not apologetic at all, so if you get offended by that, you get offended by people not taking responsibility and apologizing for their actions or whatever, um, then you might not want to go to Thailand if that, that's the case. And the, it's very slow life living. Like you don't really have a fire lit up on your ass to get shit done. It's really easy just to coast. These people go into dinner every night at these certain restaurants and they're not really progressing with anything. They're just going for bike rides and, and eating food and going for bike rides and eating food and that's their life. Um, but perhaps they're there. I'm sure they're there because they have a big savings account or their parents paid them or something and they just they have this big savings account and just they're, they're using up their savings. But it's very rare for me to find somebody actually working on a project there to try and make some money. So if you want to make money, you got to, like I said, go to that cafe and work your ass off there. But I uh, hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Do yourself a favor and hit that big, red, juicy subscribe button down below. And like I said, if you want to give the raw food diet a go, then visit the 30dayrawfoodchallenge.com and you can sign up right now for the next one. Adios, guys. Peace out.